Our panel is being joined by two distinguished individuals who will introduce themselves, uh, Paul and Janice. Um, this is a uh, opportunity to hear from individuals who have been engaged civically for uh, much of their uh, careers. Uh, and it's an opportunity for students who are here to help shape that uh, narrative that you'll hear uh, because they have prepared some questions uh, or some observations that they would like the panel, our panel, to address. So, Ada, the first one. Hi, my name is Fiona and I'm a junior and I'm from Sterling Global Education and I came here because I want to know more about the civic life of Chinese American and I have two questions for you guys. So the first one is, why is it so important for the Chinese Americans to have more social impact in the American society? And the second one is, um, what do you guys think of the phenomenon of the increasing numbers of Chinese international students in America? Thank you. Well, since Paul's on the end. <laughs> My name is Paul Leong, and I'm a recently elected uh, District 203 board member. Uh, District 203 is one of the largest school districts in Illinois and have an operating budget of more than $280 million, so it's a very large enterprise. I'm going to approach uh, Fiona's first question, and my answer is um, chop suey and Chinese laundry. Sounds like it has no relationship at all, but uh, those are the two things that I did. I worked in Chinese restaurant cooking chop suey, and I worked uh, washing the Chinese laundry. Again, it sounds unrelated, but here's the rub. When I was a child, that's all I could see Chinese people doing. That's the only things I could see on my horizon in terms of my future. Cooking chop suey, doing laundry. Now, these businesses serve my family well, and it's honest and, you know, no shame to work in those places. But that's all I could see. And that's a big reason I got involved. Nowadays, all my kids can see is STEM, accounting, finance. That's it. That's all they can see Chinese people doing. That's all they can see Chinese people being. I think our community has the talent and, and the capability to do and be just about anything. And that's why I'm stepping up and doing this, because I want my kids to see and all the other kids to see that there's so much more we can do, and the sky's the limit as far as opportunity and accomplishment. Thank you. My name is Janice Sanderson. I'm a DuPage County board member. I, as Teresa, was elected last November and was sworn in in December, and previously a Naperville Township trustee where we dealt with the social service aspect. So I'm a graduate of North Central College. I grew up in Bolingbrook. If anyone knows about Bolingbrook, there's a longtime mayor there, and he, and he is a good friend, but I ran against him one time. And I called a huge bill discretion, Roger Clare, the mayor. Um, I felt I had to stand up for a, for a topic. A, a, it was a water issue. I, I got involved, you know, I was always involved, but played from high school. I just enjoyed politics, enjoyed campaigns, enjoyed being part of everything. Um, I'm a Rotarian, um, very involved with that, and, and how I came to that civic involvement was I won one of their scholarships in, in Bowling Rock, and I got a chance to go to Washington, D.C., and I fell in love with, you know, with everything political, everything government, how to help people. Now, my career was always in private sector. I spent a short time working for Governor Thompson, but pretty much always in, in, in the private sector because I felt that you needed to uh, you know, make a living, you know, kind of um, earn your way, you know, buy your home, you know, kind of save for retirement. And, but I always stayed involved with politics. So I always did it from, you know, being involved with a, you know, a beautification committee, plan commission, and I kept focusing on different things that sought my interest. And eventually, by staying involved, kind of, you pay your dues, 
But you also, it's timing. And I, I hate to say anything you do, but you learn. As Teresa, well, your, your story is very good because you talked about staying involved and learning from others. So I felt I did the same thing. And you learn so much by, by engaging in campaigns and different processes. And, um, and one of the things that I feel strongly is that many of you are probably bombarded with such negative messages about government or politics. And you get it from so many different angles. And I hope you will look at public service, running for office, or being engaged, being appointed, or going that route. Um, is, is find out what you love to do with your passion. You know, go at it, but offer something back to the community. I'm, I'm the only white face here, and I love it, because I learned so much from you, learning so much from your story, and I think that's so important. My, my significant other is involved with the, is president-elect of the um, Illinois State Bar Association. In each of the bar associations, under that umbrella, you have the Asian American Bar. I was at the South Asian Bar last Saturday night at one of their events. They, you have the Advocates, the Polish. You have the Justinians, the Italians. And every group seems to like having their own because you like each other. There's com you know, common elements, and that's important. But I think also, go to the next route. Keep your identity. One of the things, again, growing up, my, you know, my father was adopted, and you found that out later. But I mean, I'm English and Irish, but my grandparents were Hungarian Slovak. I never learned the languages. I never, you know, you kind of got the food. But you guys have so much going for you. You, you, you speak two languages, maybe three, maybe four. Um, keep your identity, but get out there and get engaged for the, for the things that, have, that, drive, that, that drive your belly and what you want to be passionate about, whether it's better health care, um, lower taxes, it can be, a, you know, a, a variety of interests, but just get involved, and, and we we love to have you. Uh, especially in Naperville, we're very diverse, and I was proud to stay when he got elected. And that was that was wonderful. But now we have Jim, and we're going to do more. And and you know, it's not going to be long before we're going to have that Asian American or Hispanic or Muslim or Indian mayor of our of, of Naperville, and and I look forward to that day. Thank you. I think when I spoke earlier, I uh, addressed um, a lot of that first question of why it's important to get involved, but I also want to reiterate what uh, Anthony was saying, um, that whole idea of um, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu, um, because it really does make a difference to be at the table, making the decisions and um, writing that menu, as he said, as he put it so nicely. Um, when, um, well, before I ran for office, um, you know, I, I was an organizer in the community. I advocated for policy and worked together with folks like CW um, and uh, the, the Chinatown organizations to push for uh, more resources for the community. And to a certain extent, we were successful, but at the same time, I knew that uh, I could do so much more with a seat at the table. And if you think about it, um, you know, and, and I did mention earlier that being engaged in all different ways is just as important. And, you know, not everybody has to run for office. Although, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, for me, that's, um, you know, it, it was the right way for me to be engaged. Um, I, I think it's important to have an impact on public policy, and in the state house, the bills that we pass um, and get signed into law affect 13 million people across the state. Right? Everybody has to follow the law, and so you know, for me, uh, that's a meaningful, significant way to make an impact, and that's why I think it's so important. Um, with regard to the second part of the question about. Um, you know, more um, international students and, uh, you know, Chinese immigrants um, coming to the United States, especially at an early age. Um, I think that's, that's great. Uh, you know, we're a nation of immigrants and, um, you know, I think that that diversity, especially the internal diversity within the Chinese American community is a great thing to have, right? So, um, you know, I grew up um, at a time when like a lot of the Chinese Americans were 
uh, immigrants, from um, you know working class backgrounds like my parents and my grandfather who was here as a laborer, right? And um, and the horizon was very narrow, where you know the the job prospects for folks like my grandfather um, were very narrow, and and you know he did work at a restaurant for his entire life. Um, uh, plus, you know, working in, in uh, migrant farm work, you know, in the, in the fields because this was California. And so these low-level jobs um, were all that there were. Um, but uh, now, you know, we have a very internally diverse uh, Chinese-American population, you know, with uh, people who are more recent, coming from different regions in China, different socioeconomic backgrounds, um, and you know everyone adds to the diversity of this country and contributes. And so, um, you know, I just hope that you know we're all aware of um, the the different needs that still exist because of that diversity, and you know, not. Um, all Asian Americans are the same, not all Chinese Americans are the same, um, and that uh, those of us who have been here um, longer, you know, m might have a better view of the, the struggles with racism and civil rights, um, you know, throughout the, the past um, you know, century and a half, and that uh, racism has not been eradicated, and um, you know, we all need to be cognizant of that and um, think about how uh, we can maybe, you know, help um, make our society more equitable um, so that, you know, we're not just thinking about ourselves, but thinking about how we can work with other um, minority groups in order to achieve that equity. So, that's fine. So, I've had a couple of sports references already. How many of you know who Jeremy Lin is? And answer your, I'm answering your question, so no? Yes, most everybody. So how, how many of you know what the current hubbub is? If you were to look at uh, Twitter and you, you see what's going on in social media, what's the current issue with Jeremy Lin going on? Anybody, can you? His hair, right? <laughs> right? His hair. Yeah. Yeah. That's his hair. What, what's the issue with his hair? I need one of you young guys. To, what's the issue with his hair? Uh, he have a, his hairstyle is really like a, kind of like a black man style. <laughs> and the other players that say it cannot happen. Right. The, right. The specific audio was his man. Your last name is Lin. Don't you know? Your last name is Lin. You can't have your hair like that. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because that, in answer to your question, uh, in my humble opinion, it, it, your civic leadership, your advocacy doesn't necessarily have to come through the channel of being an elected. Your civic leadership and your advocacy can come through your social media site. If you look on my Facebook page, and I know many of you young kids don't have Facebook, I know, but, <laughs> but on, on, the, on the Facebook page, I, I post about things like that, uh, about Jeremy Lynn's hair. I post about a certain fellow in um, Hollywood who's an Asian writer and who, who literally says, hey, it's great for you guys to give us this award, but we don't have enough Chinese Americans or Asian Americans represented in Hollywood on screen. The same, you talk about the role model, right? The role models are, are what we do for our kids so that my kids can see they can feel comfortable and confident speaking up, speaking their mind, standing up and saying, I want to get elected, I want to make change, etc." cetera. Paul feels the same way. Uh, from our standpoint, in my family, it goes beyond just the election. It goes beyond uh, legislation because, quite honestly, much of what we believe in our family from my Chinese heritage is the hard work, is the education, is the family. And, and that's, that's just my family. So I don't know if that's the same in your family, but culturally, this is what I have from sort of being raised Chinese, is that, that, that work ethic and the, the uh, education, and that's just what we focus on. Taking that one step further and participating in advocacy or civic leadership 
outside of just being elected. I think that's even more important because when we're talking about most of you here, right, we don't have a constituency um, that is, what is the community district? Asian American? 24%. 24%. I mean, that, that's fantastic. Right? That concentration exists for Teresa's district. It doesn't exist that way for most of us, whether it's Joliet or uh, New Trier or Naperville. So we get to, it's both a plus and a minus, right? We, we get to sort of figure our way out um, in a predominantly white society. And I think a lot of what I'm here for today is to just encourage you guys to right, feel the strength, feel the power, feel the confidence to speak up when you feel like you want to and that it's not a function of just getting elected or just signing a petition, but it's a function of, if you have a, if you have a comment about right, uh, Kmart, right, <laughs> making that comment about Jeremy Lynn's hair, in my website, I just posted it. I said, hey, you know what? I've watched for 50 years I've been on this earth, and I've watched right, um, Kareem and Jewel Jabbar and a bunch of other people put on karate uniforms and <laughs> right, karate outfits. And uh, a lot of what the, uh, the cultural sort of appropriation, which in one case, uh, people are saying, hey, you know, that's bad. You can't culturally, you can't take my culture. I've always felt that that's, that's kind of hip. When I see an NBA player, when I see an uh, NFL player with a, you know, with a Chinese character <laughs> tattooed on his arm or, or something that, it, 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 which represents our culture, and I think, okay, well, that's, that's kind of cool, right? But I, I assume that's sort of a, a praise or homage to, to what we believe in and a lot of what comes out in uh, traditional Chinese culture. So th that's the answer to my answer to your first question. The answer to your second question, yeah, but the, having more immigrants, whether it's EB-5 um, or, or high school uh, age uh, uh, immigration, yeah, I think it's a wonderful thing. Right? I mean, we're talking about uh, coming together as a group, coming together and being powerful within the American society, and it's going to be more and more diverse as the years progress. And I think that by like, having more of a voice and having more strong leaders in that um, diverse culture is a good thing for us. Thank you. This is great. We are. are approaching a break uh, uh, fairly shortly, um, but uh, I think the panel really is starting to um, drag the elephant that might be in the room into view. Um, uh, Hamilton certainly uh, touched on it, as did Paul, um, uh, as did uh, Teresa and, and, and Janice. Um, but I wanted to share with you uh, just a personal experience that uh, I had with Teresa when she and I were in the uh, governor's cabinet. Uh, she called me uh, and said, um, uh, this is Teresa Ma. And I said, um, in essence, so what? And she said, I'm calling from the governor's office. And I said, yes, Ms. Ma. <laughs> How can I help you? <laughs> And she proceeded to tell me about a uh, potential uh, vendor for my department that she felt wasn't being given a fair hearing. Remember that, uh, Teresa? Kind of sort of. Say yes. <laughs> and, and she wanted me, and, and she wanted me to tell her what I was going to do about it. And I said, I'll look into it right away. <laughs> now, is that a little bit more for me? <laughs> the, the point was that Teresa was in a position of influence uh, and power, and she used her voice to make something happen. Now, in government, so much of what happens never comes before uh, the voters, or never comes before a uh, appropriation committee, for monies, it simply happens because someone is in a position to uh, get someone else to do something, which serves the community ultimately in, 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 in a number of different ways. 
So a lot of things that all of these individuals uh, are doing today, yesterday, and will do in the future may never be uh, front page or even back page of any uh, newspaper or uh, Snapchat uh, conversation. But it does happen. And it couldn't happen if they weren't in those positions. So here's my question for, for all of you. You have, um, you have hinted at what it took for you to uh, run for a public office, whether it was to broaden the, the visibility of options for uh, Asian Americans. But um, you have an audience in front of you that, as uh, Anthony said, is tomorrow's leaders. What is the one thing that you would like to tell them to do today to start thinking about a position um, in our civic sphere of many possibilities? School board, elected officials, human rights commissions, any number of different roles. What is it that, that they could consider that you've had to consider to move forward. Now I'll start with Hamilton. Yes. <laughs> it's it's just do it, right? I mean, the more people uh, like you who take leader position, uh, leadership positions, the more people like you who get elected to student council body, president, secretary, vice president the more people, young people like you who step up and become the, uh, I don't care what it is, whether it's CFA, right, but a leadership position within the Charter Financial Analyst community or through some sort of bar association or finance professional or restaurant association, have, right, have that, have the guts, have the confidence to say that you can do it and just do it. And if you fail, since we've all failed, um, so, right, many of us have failed many, many, many times, and that's how we get stronger. And if you don't get elected the first time, then that's fine. Figure out why. Figure out what more you could do. Figure out what else you can do outside of the election that can be right, really puts you into the position of leadership otherwise. That helps that next generation if you're a junior or a senior. That helps the freshmen come in to say, hey, hey so and so, the senior, just got elected to a uh, school class, I'm uh, sorry, class president or school president. All of that, I think, builds upon itself. So my, you know, my simple thing is just to say, to do it, just to do it. I would echo a lot of that, but I, I'd like to uh, give you advice for you to start at an even more basic level, and that is to uh, build social relationships. So. Um, so kind of contrary to what you were saying earlier about um, social media, I mean, I think social media is great, but I, I think that it's even more important to get out from behind your devices and your laptops and talk to people, you know, build those relationships one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I'm going to tell you a story about when I was a freshman in high school and uh, I was new to the school. And I found myself in a situation where I was bullied by, you know, another girl who had an older sister at the school and, you know, she, um, you know, somehow decided that I, you know, I was the one that they were going to ostracize. Um, and it was a really painful experience for me where I felt like, um, I had an extra hill to climb in terms of making friends at that school. And I felt kind of powerless because it was a big group of, of other girls, you know, it was an all girls high school, um, against me. Um, but what I ended up doing was um, there was an opportunity to run for class office. And I decided to run for freshman class president. But, you know, so. I just decided to do it, right? But in order to win, I had to make friends with people, talk to every single person that wasn't part of that clique that was bullying me, and convince them 
why I should be their voice and to be their representative um, on student council. And, uh, you know, the story has a happy ending. I won. Um, and I was freshman class president. Um, but I couldn't have done that if I had not reached out and spoken to, you know, made new friends on my own, spoken to other people who were not part of that clique. You know, I didn't let that um, bullying deter me. I, there were other people in the class that I made friends with. Um, so, you know, being engaged uh, civically starts with being engaged individually with people and uh, talking to people, making friends, and building those relationships one-on-one. -on -one. Having the courage to run is probably the biggest um, thing to do. It's, you can have confidence. You may have the ACT scores, SAT scores to do things. But if you don't have the courage just to put yourself out there, that's, that's the first step. Um, I think social media is important. Yes, you must get away from it, and that, she's, Teresa's exactly right. But social media also allows you the opportunity to, sh to showcase your talents and what you're engaged in, what you find passionate about. So I enjoy social media, and you know, Facebook is, I put out there where I've been, what I'm doing. I learn from that, and people comment. They tell me about things, and again, you're showing that I'm doing my, beyond doing my job, but engaging in the community and finding out things. I mean, I'm sure we wouldn't have that, you know, if, if, as for social media, just getting out there. So, so I think that's really important. Uh, what Hamilton said about, you know, um, I'll take the Michael Jordan, just do it. I mean, just do it. Don't be positive. Um, many stories, bullying or different, you know, impediments to getting where you're going to be, but, but be positive. Why do you want to do this? Do this for the right reasons. Don't be angry, okay? Because you know what? Life's too short to be angry about anything. Move beyond that. That will only bring you down and make people feel uncomfortable about you. If you, if you show a positive mental attitude and positiveness towards whatever you're engaged in, that will get you elected, that will help you earn a very good living, promote your business, or whatever you want to do. And plus, you just feel better. I think that's really important. Many people say, you have the right attitude. And I, I, I really try to do that, because that's the most important thing I go into, whether it's my, my day job in a technology company, working for a CEO, it's, it's you know, my relationships with others, or being on the county board. It's just being positive. Trying to you know, find answers and get things done for our constituency, meeting all the residents, all the taxpayers, everyone. Uh, the key word I'd like to throw out there is persistence. Um, well, my, my wife calls it uh, stupid stubbornness. <laughs> uh, six months before my election, I met with a political consultant. He was very wise, very experienced, and he knew oceans and oceans more than I did about all of this. And he said, okay, Paul, you want to run for this office? I said, yeah, okay. How much money do you have? I said, uh, zero. <laughs> and he said, uh, who's on your campaign team? And I said, well, it's uh, me and the wife. <laughs> and he said, what social networks and communities are in your pocket? And I said, uh, none. And he basically told me, well, you have no chance at all. <laughs> You've got nothing. You should have been doing this a year and a half ago. Forget it. You have no chance at all. And uh, he didn't know me very well.